Good afternoon, everybody. This is Dee Reinhardt with Illinois WorkNet. We are starting our uh, technical assistance call for October 11th, 2017. Goodness gracious, um, today is feels like it's almost Christmas because of the way the weather is. Goodness gracious. Anyway, um, today we've got um, a lot of things to talk about, not much to show you. But if you have not already had a chance to check in, please do so by agency. We do track this. So if you um, are on the call, please check in by agencies. I would appreciate that. We can get started right now. And what we're going to do, I'm going to pull up another um, page here and make it a little bit bigger. So this is our numbers from the dashboard that I show you guys every time we have a call. And just to let you know, there are no 2151s past due. Whoop, whoop, whoop. That could have something to do with the fact that the random assignments have been finished and we don't have too many new people coming into the system. But we will be getting some reassignments from customers. So you will have to still stay on top of that. We have some enrollments required, and there's a couple of them in here that are older. Jane Adams has one from June 6th, and uh, Phalanx has one from August 30th. Springfield Urban League has one from September 13th. There were a couple other ones that were uh, in September, and then a few that were early October. Those, those I can understand, but we do have um, like a five-day kind of thing that it, you need to be able to get your enrollments in. So if there's extenuating circumstances with these ones that I noted the dates, please um, reject the referral or talk to Olivia or I to see what it is that we need to do with those particular customers. Um, if there's something else going on, we need to note that in case notes and or on documentation. We also have some 2151As that are past due. Um, the, big, the big offenders here are CAPS Cottage Grove and Tri-County Urban League. Now we've got three columns here that need to be cleaned up zeros in them, and we're going to, uh, Olivia has already printed the list of the customers that are in these categories now, and we are going to verify that they are cleaned out by October 25th. And those columns are this one, tw the 2151A past due, the completion status requirement needed, and the SNAP in eligible column. So if you have customers in one of these three columns, the 2151A past due, completion status, or SNAP ineligible, you need to have those done by two weeks from today because we will be checking on these. Now, we've got some numbers in the minimal progress and no progress, and those are customers who, in one case, I know that the customer was in the hospital and he was not able to participate. Another one, um, something happened, so it was an acceptable reason. If there are customers that you have that you have no reason for them to, you know, no good faith reason as defined by DHS, they should not be in this minimal progress or no progress. You should be doing a conciliation on them and moving them into the conciliation column by by uploading a 2151A that has moved their status to conciliation. Then we have target occupations missing. Um, I'm missing who this is at the very bottom. Let me minimize this just a little bit. Uh, Tri-County Urban League, you've got 63 people that are missing a, a target occupation on the career uh, tab of the I-STEP, and North Lawndale Employment, Fritz, you're missing 32 people 
from the target occupation. So if you need, if either of you need help getting that squared away, let me know. I will show you again how you can get that taken care of. Then for the staffing packets that are ready and or done, just to let you know, we're hoping that by next month's staffing time period, we are going to have the check boxes fixed. That's our, our hope and our goal. The check box is fixed so that if you uncheck the box, it will stay unchecked so that you can know exactly who needs to be staffed. Up until this point, we've had to have you guys do it manually, but we're hoping to have the programmer get that done so that it makes it a little bit easier for you. And just to show you, um, we had a test staffing over the phone in Region 5. And we had a little bit of an issue with uh, DHS being able to open documents using Internet Explorer, so we have to fix that. But otherwise, I feel like that it it went relatively smoothly, and I don't know, is Autumn on the call? How do you feel about that? Autumn, if you want to type in the, you felt like it went smoothly? Good. So our, our hope and our goal and our dream is that we can get you guys to be able to do staffings by phone. So that way you don't have to drive around God's green earth and spend half of your life on the highway or in a bus or a train. So um, uh, Fritz, the 32 people should only be people who are actually enrolled. So if we need to take a look at that, let's do that after the call. I've got a few minutes after the call today, so maybe we can just stay in and um, I'll call you, or you can call my home office number. Um, all right, Nancy Brown says, some people who are closed out and staffed still are asking for 2151As or a full packet. It has been months since we closed them out. Um, give me a few examples. If you can send me a few of the case numbers and let me know by office, Nancy, if you don't mind doing a little bit of that. Then, um, oh, yeah, this, the EPIC system will still look for those people. Um, that's why we're try, trying to do manually. Uh, right now, you have to uncheck them. Right now, it defaults to everybody is checked. So um, if that's what you're talking about, that's what we're going to get to try to get fixed for next month. But if you're talking about DHS, then... Okay, all right, all right. Uh, I'm going to minimize this screen right now and pull it over here. And then let's talk on moving forward about uh, the next piece on the agenda is updating customers' training programs. Uh, let me get into test and show you what I'm talking about. What we're going to be doing now is pulling a report for DHS. Oh my gosh. Um, pulling a report for DHS that is going to compare people who get jobs to the training that they received. So what we need you guys to do, and right now I can't get into test, I'm getting an error code. Let me pull open a different screen. Um, so if somebody starts out as, now this is going to be different if you only offer one training, but if you offer multiple trainings, for example, I know that CAPS uh, offers seven or eight or nine or ten training programs. So if the training programs change for those customers, then we will need you to change their training program so that we can track this appropriately. Um, let me get logged in here. And 
let's because I'm sure all of you guys know what I'm talking about, but I want to show you just for sure. All right, and I'm going to bring my screen up and make it a little bigger here so you guys can see. So I'm going to go to Jack back here, and I'm going to go to his progress page. And on his training program enrollment, if he changes from Chef Ramsey School of Restaurateurs to Warehouse and Stock Clerk training program, then we need you guys to change the training program. If somebody comes back from being on a sanction and decides that they want to get into a different program, we may be reassigning them to a different agency, or you may be assigning them to a new training program. And I know a few of you only have one, so that's going to be different for you. Um, yeah, it could be pre-employment services only, or it could be the actual training program. Kelsey asked or commented. Um, Jonathan is asking, we have a client who was enrolled in CNA training but did not pass, and now we were helping with employment-only services. You have to do that to pre-employment only because we cannot do retention-only services. That option is not available any longer. <clears throat> pre-employment is for the job search-only people, but we really need to be doing more than just job search, we need to be putting them through the like workplace skills, the Employment 101 process, helping them with a resume at least, helping them try and encouraging them if they don't have their GED to get that. So um, yes, you should change the assignment. If they are no longer doing CNA, then they should be pre-employment services only. The goal here is training, so we don't want to promote the fact of pre-employment services only. We would really like to get them into some sort of training. Um, Deidre's asking, change from one training program to another. It's going to be in case notes. I don't know what the, what, I don't know what the option is in the database for that other than just case notes. That that would be, Deidre, that would be something that you'll have to bring up Monday on the call. I don't think we've been able to see it all, at all now. So, um, OK, moving on to the next piece on the agenda. Uh, customers who are employed part time with less than 30 hours of w a week need to be engaged in additional activities so that their total engagement, including hours worked, meets 30 hours. For example, if they only work 25 hours a week, they will need to be engaged in an additional five hours of a non-core activity. Um, that could be additional job search. It could be computer training, you know, like learning how to use Word or Excel. If the customer's benefits were canceled based on earnings, they do not have to meet the 30-hour requirement for part-time employment. So if they're only making $8.25 an hour and they're working less than 30 hours a week, you still have to have them make up to that 30 hours. If they're making more than what the base income is, then their benefits will probably be canceled and then they don't have to do anything. If someone works for one month at 30 hours, loses their job, goes MIA, but is also SNAP ineligible, do we have to change their exit reason? Um, I'm going to have to think on that one, Kelsey. Let me get back to you on that. I. Um, yeah, exactly, Epic Riddles. <laughs> let me, um, let me um, copy down your question and 
move it into follow up and then we'll put it in we'll put it in the minutes if I can get an answer um, today for that. Um, reduced but not canceled. Are you talking um, SNAP benefits are reduced but not canceled? That's still the income aspect of it. And in a lot of cases, they'll go down to like maybe $12 or something. Um, then they're close to the income. It would still not hurt them to um, have some additional benefits to maybe get a little bit better job so that the uh, income raises substantially. But yeah, we need to we need to try to get them engaged so that on average it is at 30 hours a week. Frank's asking, just go back. I have people who are exempt that I have in minimal or no progress because they are not engaged, but noting but nothing can be done because of their exempt status. What do you suggest I do with them? If they are exempt and they are not progressing, I would probably try to reach out to their DHS caseworker at a staffing and see if it's medical, if it's a permanent medical or not. If it's um, not, I'm sorry, if it is a permanent medical and they're not engaging, then we can um, complete them as did not participate, and then um, they'll be off of your roles. If you've got some particular people in mind, send me some uh, DHS case, or not DHS, the other participant IDs, and we'll take a look and see what we can do with them. Uh, let me know, too, the last time you staffed them. All right. Um, moving on to the next item on the agenda, sanction process. Uh, we've had a discussion about this because we've had some customers trying to do an end run around uh, their DHS status. So what we need you guys to do uh, moving forward is if they are, and you can read this on the notes here, but we'll also send it out in the minutes from today. Once a customer has been recommended uh, for sanction, the customer needs to complete that process with DHS. You can't necessarily go to bat for them, even, even though you think it might be worthwhile. They may have forgotten to do something with DHS. They may have forgotten to redetermination re letter, whatever the forms are that they have to complete. So there's all kinds of things that DHS requires that may have nothing to do with you and your program. So if they are being sanctioned and they want to come back with you, you need to send them back to DHS. If a good cause is determined for their sanction, they'll send you back, send them back to you or to a new agency with a new 2151 and a case note explaining the good cause reason by DHS. If the good cause is not found, the sanction uh, the person will be sanctioned and lose their benefits, and after the customer gets their benefits back, their eligibility status will be updated, and a case note will be left by DHS, and the D customer will return with 2151. Now, what we need you guys to do for part of this would be to make sure that you still have appointments out through the end of December at this point in time because the customers are going to be being rescheduled. If they were a no contact or if there was nothing ever done in their case, then DHS can actually just remove the appointment and upload a new one. So you need to be watching those case, uh, the case note emails that come out every day so that you know when somebody new is coming back into your system or returning to your system. The last bullet on this is the only situation this, this would apply is if you accidentally upload a 2151A recommending sanction for the wrong customer. In that case, the 2151A should be deleted and a case note should be left explaining what happened. Now, DHS does not react immediately, so if you happen to notice, oh, I put up Mary Smith's 2151A recommending sanction, but it was actually supposed to be for Susie Snow, then you can re re delete that and add the case note, and that will fix that. Uh, 
Autumn is typing here, what client is active for SNAP? He, oh, you have a client that's active for SNAP. He has been working for his employer for some time now and is exempted from ENT. His account should be able to be marked as complete due to being hired by employer, okay? This customer is still getting benefits. I didn't think he was working enough hours to add as job retention. This makes me think, yes, confused. Yeah, I, um, you can mark him as complete because we do have the column for under 30 hours or the option for under 30 hours and the option for over 30 hours. The, it's just a matter of during that retention period, you want to try to work with the customer to get them more hours. Maybe they need to increase a skill, or maybe they need to increase their workplace skills. So that could help that with that. So Autumn, did that explain to you? Call me if it didn't. I am in Rockford tomorrow doing a TA uh, session with them, so I will be incommunicado tomorrow, but Olivia should be able to answer questions if um, if you have them come up. And then Friday I'm available if we need to go over things. Okay, next item on the agenda, Hunger Coalition. I know I've seen copies of emails from a number of you having received this email from Somebody's got her, got the person's name, but it's a Maria something from the Hunger Coalition. Please just forward those emails on to Tammy. You cannot give out any information about that. She will get the people from the study team to answer those uh, email requests. Nancy is saying, so if we have a client that is working under 20 hours for the first 90 days, we try to get them extra time. After that, we can close them out under 30 hours. Okay, under 30 hours. Yes, you you need to try to get them to the 30 hours. That's the whole that's the whole bailiwick. You need to work with them um, to get them to that 30 hour mark of employment. Because depending upon what they're making, that gives them hopefully enough money that their SNAP benefits are then decreased to the point of non-existent. Well, you can keep them on your rolls for that 150 days if they're working under 30 hours a week. Uh, next item, working on realignment. We talked about this just a few moments ago. Customers who never attended the initial CBO orientation, DHS is working on finding out who is still eligible and who is not eligible. They will be referring customers back who either A, never attended the orientation and are still eligible, or B, are re returning to eligibility after being sanctioned. What we're going to look at is trying to find out if there are any customers who were potentially marked as exempt who are, maybe it was a, um, a temporary exemption, then we'll, we'll work on finding out if those people are done or not or, and coming back into the fold. But if, um, if you get a notification that there is a customer coming for intake orientation. It is probably somebody who DHS has reached out to and has worked with to get them re-engaged. And we want to try to do everything that we can to do that. And so I'm going to skip an item here and go down to adding programs. One of the things that we would like to see is if there is anybody who has has been getting requests for a particular type of program. I know somebody sent me sent us an email today, do we have an electrician's program anywhere? So if any of you have the ability to add some additional programs that would be in a high growth industry or would be needed in your particular demographic area, then please send that information to Tammy. Um, maybe it's things like the trades or any apprenticeship programs that are available. 
other offerings that would give the customer some growth potential moving forward in, uh, into the industries that are useful and will bring people good income. That's the whole goal of this program. Or stackable credentials moving forward. Okay. Um, that is the end of my agenda. What we would like to do, and I, I forgot to put this on the agenda here, but what we would like to do is try to um, bring some of our CBOs back to talk on the DHS calls about any programs that they are bringing in new. So if you do have a new program that you want to add and you are sending that off to Tammy, we'll, we'll have you featured on one of the DHS calls again like we did before so that we can talk about those programs. Um, so if you have any of those ideas, let's go with those. Oh, I forgot to talk about budget modifications. Oh, yes, Kendra, the retail program. That's new for you. Um, I believe one other agency has that retail program, so um, that would be something to focus on. Budget modifications. Tammy is working on those based on performance and expenditures. If you have any questions about that, um, please reach out to Tammy, and or if she has questions, she will be reaching out to you. Okay. Oh, all right. I think somebody else down south is offering it too, Kelsey. Um, so that is, um, I believe that's it for the day. We're in at 329, so... Oh, you have Retail at Kara, too? Okay, Mary Beth. So we've got a few agencies that are offering those things. All righty. Everybody have a great rest of your day. And I'm going to be selfish here and say, go Cubs, go. <laughs> um, and, you know, Judith, Tammy is on an airplane coming back in from Seattle. So if you've got those kind of questions, I would suggest sending her an email, and she'll catch up um, with those tomorrow because she's back in the office tomorrow. All right, everybody have a great rest of your day, and we'll talk to you on the 25th, if not before I know I'm visiting a couple of TA spots over the next couple of days. Have a great rest of your day. Bye.